Hi, my name is Sally Caselli, and welcome to Excel in 30 Minutes. This is a concise tutorial on learning Excel even for anyone that has never used Excel before to get you started and understand how Excel works and how to use it effectively in business in just 30 minutes. This tutorial is designed to give you the tools necessary in your technology toolkit for a new job application or for just understanding how Excel works. Now this is based on Excel 2016, but the functionality is going to work exactly the same in previous versions. So let's get started. So as soon as you open Excel and you start a new spreadsheet, you are presented with a window very similar to this. So in Excel you have the workbooks or spreadsheets, and these are the files very similar to like Microsoft Word. Now in Excel, the one thing that is unlike Microsoft Word, first it's designed to perform calculations using formulas. The other thing is is that uh, you have here in the bottom these tabs. Typically it starts with, with only one tab and you keep on adding new ones by simply clicking on this plus sign here in the bottom. Now to rename these tabs, you can simply right click on them and choose rename and you can give it whatever name you want. If you wanted to delete a specific tab, of course, with caution, you can just simply uh, press delete. Let's get started with some of the other concepts as well. Basically, you have these columns and rows, these, and then you have also these squares here, and these are referenced as the cells. Now, this reference right here, it's referred to as B3. And you take into consideration the column and wherever it meets with a row, and that's the reference. Now typically, whenever you're building those formulas for the calculations, you'd be using those references instead of the values within the references. So that's one of the key concepts in here. Additionally, in each one of those cells, you can insert here text, or you can insert numbers, and uh, those could be uh, numbers formatted in a variety of ways. They could be general number, they could be currency, they could be accounting format or a date or time and percentage and things of that nature. And you'd format it from here, or it could be a formula as well. For example, here you could have a D3, you could have three, and here you could have five. And now in here you want to get the total for those. Well, in here you could put a formula. And by the way, all formulas in Excel, they start with an equal sign. That's how the computer knows that it's a formula. And then we put in the function, and then we get those uh, the total for those values. And I'll explain those later as well. This is an example of a formula within a cell, and what tells the computer it's a formula is that equal sign in front of it. And the other thing to remember in Excel as well is that if I change one of those values, and I hit enter, the total will be updated automatically, and that's where Excel, the power of Excel, comes in. As far as other functionality, the tabs here and the other functionality, it's similar to Microsoft Word or other applications from Microsoft Office. So now let's move on to another area for you to understand how Excel works and how to get started with it. So I have created these worksheets here in the bottom, and now I'm going to demonstrate how to use formulas to make those calculations here. So one thing to remember as well is in adjusting these columns, you can simply notice how the text doesn't fit in there. You can just drag it to the right and make it fit, or you can simply double click and it will adjust it accordingly to the widest point in your column there. So that's how you adjust it. Now if I wanted to put a title in here, I could simply start uh, typing and then hit enter. The other thing that I could do here is that uh, I could select these a bunch of cells in here, and then I could uh, utilize what's called here merge and center. And for you, the icon might be a little bit larger than what it is because of my recording uh, screen size here. So I choose uh, merge and center, and now notice all these cells have been merged, and the text has been centered. Now, of course, you could make this font larger and adjust the properties manually, or what you could do is you could go and use one of those uh, styles, uh, cell styles, and format this using one of the themes. The next thing that we'll learn here is to get you started right away with using Excel is that you want to format these uh, cells and you select them and you want to format them so that they are currency. Well, you can format in currency by using this drop down here and choosing currency, or you could use this dollar sign 
icon over here under the number area. And at this point, that is has been formatted as currency. And here on the right hand side, what we want to do potentially is that we want to calculate those uh, values and add them up, basically get the sum or the total of these uh, the expenses for January, February, and March. Now to calculate it, one of the easiest ways, of course, would be to use this tool here, the auto sum on the top right and hit auto sum and then just press enter and that will give you the total of those values. Now notice that you have this toolbar here that tells you what it's calculating. So you need to make sure when you use the auto sum that it's doing the proper calculation here. The other way to do this auto sum or to get the sum of these numbers is to understand and do this manually. So the manual way is the equal sign. So all formulas start with the equal sign. And then in Excel, you would put in the next thing is typically the function that you want to perform in Excel. Now, Excel has hundreds and hundreds of functions. And here we are going to cover only a few of them to just get you started. So um, in this case, we type sum. And then notice it says sum. It adds all the numbers in a range of cells. So now it's, it's expecting me to insert the range. The range in the cells here is expressed by using parentheses. And then you can simply either type those references, for example, C5. We want to start on C5, then a colon, and then E5. The colon there, it represents the range in between. I want to start at C5 all the way through E5, where it could be E500 for that matter. So it's going to calculate everything in between. You could type those or you could select them like I selected them here and then you hit enter. And then you could do the same thing if you wanted for the next one as well. So sum and then open parentheses. You could even do that. Uh, C6 colon E6 and then close parentheses and hit enter. Or you could drag it like I did earlier. Now, another method here is that instead of me spending all day typing these references here or these formulas, what you could do is that you can drag this down from top to bottom. So you can drag it top to bottom or left to right. This, by the way, it's referred to as the autofill feature in Excel. Now, you could use this for anything in sequence, and I'm not going to go into details as all the technicalities of it, and you can check one of my other videos regarding that. We wanted to calculate also the totals for January here. So you do it the same way, equal sign, sum, open parentheses, and then we drag this thing down, hit enter, and now we have the total here for this column for January. Now to move it to the right, we can apply this also on the right hand side by using the autofill feature. So just drag it here in the bottom when it changes to a little plus sign and then let it go and it gives you the total. Now let's say we wanted to get the average of these, uh, these values from C4 to C12. So let's type here average. You can either start typing equal sign and then just type average and it will show up here equals average or I'll show you also a trick how to use those formulas and functions. And basically what you do is you go under formulas here, you click on insert function and you let's assume you don't know where average is. So it's, you say, give me a brief description as to what you want to do. So you just choose average and notice it, it tells you it returns the value arithmetic mean of arguments and all that type of thing. And then you also have this option here. So for any of the functions in Excel, you can always go here under help on this function and it'll take you to the Microsoft help. It'll give you a description of it as to how it works. For example, equal sign average A1 through A20. So if you're, instead of doing the sum, sum A1 through A20, now you could do average A1 through A20. And then it gives you the syntax, how it works, some explanations, and even some examples here below. That's one way of doing it. So you could do it from this point here, you choose average, and then you're saying, okay, I want the average where it starts. And then the number one where we want to start is over here. I'm selecting it. And then I'm all I'm doing, I'm clicking okay. And notice the average is 154. Now I could have done that also this way, equal sign average open parentheses, 
and then select the range that I want to get the average for. And notice that's done. Now I could use the autofill feature and get the average for all the other columns. It works the same way for also using the lowest number. So let's say I want uh, the minimum. I go here under equal, MIN, open parentheses, select the range. I could start from top or bottom and then drag it to the right. And there it is. Let's say I want to get the maximum number and I'll let you do that and you should be able to figure that out by now. Now let's move on to something else and more fun as well. So now let's say we wanted to do some more calculations. So let's say we wanted to uh, get the sum of a bunch of numbers. Um, and notice we have here a bunch of employees and we want to get their uh, pay figured out, the total deduction. So this is their monthly pay, their deduction one, deduction two. Now we want to calculate the total deduction. This is again adding a bunch of numbers together. So it'll be equal sum and then the first number with the next one, hit enter and it gives me the totals. Now this feature here that it uh, auto filled automatically, that is a feature in 2016. If that doesn't work for you in previous versions, don't worry about it. You can simply drag it and do it this way. Now the next one is would be the net pay. How do we calculate the net pay? So basically it would be gross pay minus deductions and that would give us the net pay. So we are learning here uh, how to do subtraction. So you do the equal sign and then you could choose here the gross pay which is C4 minus the total deductions which would be F4 hit enter and there is the total for all the employees at this point and there is the net pay for the first employee. Now we can drag this down and of course we have the calculation for all the employees. Whenever you are doing this uh, make sure that you double check the references and also note that uh, here we did not need to put the function for basic arithmetic uh, calculations. Now let's learn about how to calculate the annual net pay. So we want to get this multiplied, this is the monthly net pay, we want to multiply it by 12. And here we are learning the multiplication aspect, how to do it in Excel. So all we need to do here is uh, do equals uh, G4, so that would be this cell over here, times 12. Hit enter and that gives us the annual pay for the employees. Then let's say we want to calculate the um, weekly pay. This would be dividing the annual pay by 12 and again it would be equal sign the reference which would be H4 divided. Division is represented by the uh, slash and then we want to uh, separate by uh, divide that by 52, which would be the number of weeks per year. Hit enter, and there it is, the calculation per pay per week. So this briefly explained how to use uh, the arithmetic functions in Excel, and these are very key, even though they may seem simple, they are very key in utilizing Excel effectively for your job or whatever that you are doing. The next item here, before we waste too much time and we go beyond our 30 minute time limit here for this tutorial, is uh, how do we do sorting of the data and filtering of the data in Excel? Well, that's very easy as well. Uh, let's say we want to sort here by, or let's say by date first. So all you do is you go to the column that you want to sort by and then you click here on sort and filter and you choose oldest to newest or newest to oldest, however you want to sort it. or Go to another region here and choose A through Z or uh, alphabetically or however. So it's as simple as that. Basically click on it and choose to sort it. If you want to filter this data, let's say we want to see all the sales by a specific salesperson. So we go here and we want to sale, filter only the sales from Franks. Well what you do is you click here on sort and filter click on filter and notice it will put these drop down arrows. Now in here you can click on the drop down and choose whichever you want to have them filtered by. So we want Franks and now notice all the Franks records show up. The rest are not being displayed at this time. 
you can filter by more than one criteria here. So you could say, I want to filter by the region, uh, specific region, let's say the eastern region, and then francs, and then notice I see only those from francs and the eastern or area. Now to clear the filters, what you'd have to do is, and unfortunately this doesn't fit on, on my screen here, but there's an option right above the recording here or this menu it says clear filter from region or you can just uncheck this so clear region from filter and then it'll clear it out and then to unfilter again the next one you just clear it on the top notice as well that uh, one other feature here is that you can also create filters that match a specific criteria that are greater than, smaller than, top 10, and all that other type of stuff. Now, um, so that's data filtering in just less than a minute here or two. Now, the next thing that I'll uh, show you here is how to create charts in Excel. So that's another very useful feature. So let's start with the basic, the easiest one first here. So let's say you have the year and the sales, and you want to apply a specific chart for this. Well, one of the cool things is that uh, if you have Office 2013 or 2016 is that you have this options here in the bottom and it will give you some additional things that you can tweak and customize here for your uh, liking and tinkering with. So here you can go under charts and you can uh, create a line chart. That's how it would look like or a, a cluster chart or any of those other types of charts here. That's one way to create the chart. The other way is, and this is the traditional way, is by going under insert and then you choose to insert a chart. Now you notice you have all these different types of charts, but one of the uh, features here is the recommended charts and this was in, new in 2013 and 2016. So click here and you choose one of those charts, click OK. Now notice it inserted the chart automatically here and uh, the next thing that you can do is you can customize and use any of those tools and options here on the top to tinker with it. The other thing that you can do is you can change colors if you want to tinker with colors more, uh, the layout to make it a different layout to bring more data or less data on the screen here. And also notice you have a bunch of options here on the right hand side and you have two tabs and these are contextual tools related to charts in Excel. So you can tinker with those as well with the charts. Now you might have uh, references like this where you have a bunch of stuff, um, uh, sales for example uh, for this, you have multiple sets of data. Now if you want only one set of data you can just select the labels and the data uh, area and then create a chart very similar to how you did earlier. If you want more than one, select two or three of them and so let's say three of them. We go then under insert and then choose recommended charts, pick one of those charts and then click OK. Now notice they are grouped together and you can tweak it the way we discussed it earlier. You can tweak it further. Before we move any further here as well, I'd like to uh, demonstrate how to get of data from one worksheet to another. So let's say I have here and I'm creating an annual report. And then I want to put in there the various employee expenses per month or per year, or whatever. And I have to have in here, let's say these are the names of my employees and I'm just copying and pasting them at this point but now I want to post them in another one, another area for a report. Well, uh, what you can do is basically you can uh, post the value of another cell in another worksheet wherever you want it in another part of the worksheet. You can do this in a couple of ways by using what's called named references, but here I'm going to explain it for the quick and easy way is by hitting the equal sign. So there are three steps, remember three steps here equal sign on the cell that you want to post the value. You go wherever the data was. So now I want to post, for example, the, the uh, pay for Hubert here. So I just click on it and then hit enter. And it posts it. Now if I change it somehow over here, his pay, let's say, uh, increased or decreased or whatever happened, then I can go here and it will be updated. Now notice 
whenever you see these number signs here that means that the column here it's not wide enough you just need to drag it to the right and it will be posted this could also be a calculated uh, value as well so equal it could be wherever there was a formula for example for this person here and hit enter and it's going to post it now in my madness here to uh, show excel in 30 minutes i'm going to move to another quick area here as to how to change the print uh, layout for this document and uh, let's go here to the beginning and uh, let's say i wanted to format this and tweak and tinker with it more so you can go and highlight a certain area in excel and you can apply to format that as a table and you just pick from any of these designs and you could say my table has headers and it's going to format it accordingly the other thing that you can utilize is uh, you can um, under the home tab you can use conditional formatting where you can format the data by using these bars here based on the value that exists in that cell to set the margin you can basically click on custom margins and you're going to specify how many uh, what the margin should look like on the top or on the bottom and all that type of thing uh, you can put a header and footer so if you want a custom header you could say uh, just type in here and uh, click OK and then that will be posted on all the pages there then you can also click here on print preview and it will give you a preview of, of this document let's say that i did not want to print this other stuff i just want to print this area this table right here to set the print area here what i'll do is i'll select the area that i want to set as my print area i go under page layout and then i can go under print area and choose set print area if i go to file print and get a preview of it this is what's going to print out only that specific section is going to print out i'd like to also uh, demonstrate how to um, do mailing and sharing with other uh, users as well so what we do is if we want to share this uh, spreadsheet with somebody else you can go here under the file menu and then you can click on share under share you can share it um, via email or other people in the cloud or also you can share it as an attachment and this would be the most common one the other option is to send it as a PDF you can actually choose to export this and you choose to export it as a PDF uh, format and all, that's all you have to do you give it a name I'll demonstrate at this point very briefly how you can link this for reports so supposedly every month you're making a report but you want the data from your Excel to be automatically linked to your report in Word so uh, there is a way that you can actually link a portion or a part of your data in Excel with a Word document for your reports and then every month that's going to be pulled automatically to your report so supposedly this is my document in Word here and let's say this is my report of course you could copy and paste it so for example if I choose here Control C to copy it so or copy over here and if I go and paste it into Word notice that the first thing that's going to happen here is it's going to paste it like that which doesn't look too bad however it's not really linked with Excel so what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is actually linked with our Excel file and then if you go here to Excel I select the data I copy it just like I copied it earlier control C now I go into Word here and instead of pressing control V to paste it I can click here under the paste section click on paste special and I want to paste it as a link to an Excel object and then click OK and then it has been pasted it doesn't look too different from the previous one if I were to close this and save it, so I'm going to save it and I'll call it this is my report. Now, if I go here to, and now um, I go, let's say months pass by and whatever happens there, I go and change my expenses here, have changed. So let's say I spent, so notice now my numbers changed here and such, and my expenses have gone up. Now, instead of me going and copying and pasting my report and so on, what I can do is I can minimize my Excel or close it. It doesn't have to be open, by the way. Double click on the report, 
Notice that the first thing that will pop up is it's going to say this is linked to an Excel or other file out there. Do you want to update it now? You say yes and the magic happens automatically here. But this was after I made the changes. This is linked and it updated this data automatically from Excel. As soon as I change something in Excel, it updates in my Word report. Another feature that I'd like to show you in Excel, the ability to do mail merges using a data file from Excel. This is our data file and you can maintain this any way you want as you go. And you basically have the first row has the field names, then you maintain the different columns here and the addresses and other information as well. Now you can utilize this and update it as you go and then every so often create a mail merge. Now to create the mail merge, what you do is you go under mailings here in Word, then you click on mail merge and I usually recommend that you utilize the step-by-step -step wizard. Then you click on next here and then you choose letters. You could use envelopes, uh, email messages as well, and that would be a powerful feature for you to utilize. It's the same principle overall for all of those functions, and I have other video tutorials for those as well. Then what you do is that uh, you click here, I want to create letters, and then you click on next, and then it's going to ask you, do you want to use the current document? That's what we're going to use in this case. We're going to create one from scratch. Then we click on uh, select recipients, and we go and locate that file, the Excel file that we have the data in. And this is my file. And I'm going to pick the one that says Solic uh, Caselli Customers. Typically, it would be the first one, but in this case, I'm going to use the second one because that's how I renamed it, as you noticed a moment ago. Then I click OK here, and notice it has all my customers. I could sort it, filter it, find duplicates, and all that type of thing from here and then click OK. I just told the system I'm going to use this document and I'm going to use this data file for the mail merge. The next one is uh, to write the letter. So it says go ahead and write the letter. So I say dear and then I go here under insert mail merge field and I say dear first name comma and then um, you could uh, write the letter and then also include in there uh, various fields that you have from your Excel file. So for example, if I let's say, and you could basically just fill in the fields here, you get the idea. And then you can also include in here uh, co the comments field that we had from before. You could also say, and you can format this however you want. Of course, there are multiple uses to incorporate various fields and customize this for other functions as well. But um, this is just for simplicity at this point. And then here you can click on preview letters. By the way, at this stage, you could also save this file. Uh, you could save it so that anytime you open it up in the future, it will actually link to your Excel file and you can simply run another mail merge automatically without going through all these steps. Next, you can preview your letters and notice it's going to put here Dear Owen and then I can go to the next customer, next one, next one and notice how it's changing them. And then finally you can scroll to the bottom here next to complete the merge and then you can either edit those individual letters or you can print them directly to the printer. Notice also you have this finish and merge button here on the top. So personally I choose to edit them, it will create a new document. And then at this point, all the merged files have been compiled and I should have 38 letters created automatically because I had 38 customers in my Excel file. Uh, this merged results document, you do not need to save it you can, unless you want it for documentation purposes. And the form file that you had from earlier, you can save that and utilize it for uh, future merges as well. So now if I if I go and open it up again here for mail merge, notice it will prompt me that it's going to link to the Excel file. You say yes and at this point I can go under mailings and then I can do another merge or customize this by adding something more. Finish and merge and then I edit individual letters, all of them and there it is with just a couple of clicks. If you wanted to do an email merge to send email messages, you could click here on send email messages, put a subject in here, 
and then the to field that is the field that corresponds with your Excel data file you press email here you click all records and it'll engage using Microsoft Outlook to send this out to your customers and that's how you do a mail merge in conjunction with Microsoft Excel and uh, Microsoft Word. So that is it on this tutorial, Excel in 30 minutes. I hope it was helpful and useful. And if you want to learn more about Excel, just check the full tutorials that I have put together on Excel. And thank you and feel free to post comments and uh, contact me if you have any questions or comments.